This £50,000 grant funded renewable energy installation has been a disaster and we're here to reveal all the reasons why. But before we show you all of the problems with this solar install at the end of the video, I want you to pause the video right now and tell me how many issues you can spot with the solar array behind me. DC cables are lashed in, in flexible conduit with no fixings over the gutter and on top of the roof. The panels are not mounted properly and they're actually warped. The rails haven't been cut off properly and are just hacked back with a large amount showing and no end caps. The bird protection has not been fitted properly. In fact, one section is entirely missing. So Rob, tell me about this. Oh, that's just a little present from above our array gives us gifts. It is generating, but it's also generating sort of falling bits of bird mesh. Yeah, so this is designed to deter pigeons. It's called pigeon protection, but it doesn't do very much if it's lying on the floor rather than around the array. But this is a sign that maybe things have gone a little bit awry with your solar install. So tell me the story of this grant funded solar install and what's gone wrong. It all begins about a year ago when I applied for an Eco4 grant, which became a HUG2 grant, and we got, thrillingly, um, offered full home insulation, a heat pump, which is over there, and solar. And so we were super thrilled, I mean, really pleased. The big process was the insulation, and the insulation and the house looked brilliant. The trouble kind of dug in when they said, well, we'll put you on a heat pump. We were terrified of the heat pump mm -hmm. because as a porous old house it could be just a way of burning 20 pound notes so let's just get a bit of context there how old is this house um the oldest reference to it is for is 1592 wow so okay. it's really old so 400 plus so no insulation very old rickety roof and you're trying to turn this house into basically an eco house by insulating it mm. and heating it with the electric source heating and generating your own solar. Yeah. Sounds easy, right? It's, it's easy, yeah. I mean, we're thrilled with the insulation. As I mean, soon as the blocks went on... So this is it, huh? Yeah. Just external cladding. It looks beautiful. It's been done really nicely. It's awesome stuff. Yeah. And so we were excited to see whether the heat pump would work. The heat pump team turned up. They are the same as the solar people. And everything they've touched has sort of turned to crud. The wrong radiators turned up. Once the radiators were on, they were kind of janky and of course we had a leak on the day they finished and had to drain it down ourselves around midnight which i think is not five star service mm, not um, anywhere near the solar team turned up three days late okay. they were three or four levels of subcontract wow. and they turned up late because it was a team of kids and they were too young to hire an alternative van <laughs> <laughs> so they'd have to keep this 20 year old van going and they turned up with all the gear and at that point they discovered that although this was going to be a 10 panel install they hadn't pre-planned the scaffolding the insulation people had had to throw that up for them and it wasn't quite right to give them clearance for the last two rows of panels now we're likely to have eight panels where we could fit 10 and although perhaps we'd like some more solar in the future now that kind of compromises what else we can do with the roof. Yeah. It's, it's not ideal. If it was only the loss of two panels, that would be a sad thing. But this is comedy central. Yeah, so let's just talk through the issues with this just at a glance. First of all, obviously, we've mentioned the bird protection. That's definitely not been installed right because it's all over the place. It's wavy. Uh, it's not fixed on properly, clearly, because one piece has already fallen off and the rest, it doesn't have enough clips on it. So. Mm. I would say that um, they probably should have at least put double the amount of clips that they have. And it just looks hideous the way that they've done it. But that's not the worst thing. One of the worst things is the fact that the panels are warped. They're all over the place. That's the really bad thing. The fact that these big glass panels have a twist on them. Yeah. Is, it just hurts. Scary. It hurts my brain doing it to a seven foot high by four foot wide piece of glass. It's just a bad idea. I'm gonna walk around now, have a little look, see how many issues I can find with the system and then I'll check back in with you in a bit. Now let's face it, this is not an easy roof to fit solar panels on. 
is 400 years old, the roof is not square or straight by any means. So it was always gonna be a challenge to fit panels on it. But still, you would have thought that with a bit of care and attention and maybe more than two hours labor to fit them, you could have got a better result. In fact, if it was me that was being asked to fit solar on a roof like this, I'd want to see a structural engineer report first to make sure that the roof is structurally sound enough to fit the kind of weight loading of panels that we're looking at in this particular case. So do you want to see the inverter? Let's go over and take a look. But first, before we do, I need to ask one thing from you because I've noticed that nearly 80% of people who watch our videos haven't subscribed yet. So if there's one thing that you can do for us to support the channel if you're enjoying this video, it's hit that subscribe button. It really helps us to grow and you'll join the artisan movement and follow us on our amazing journey. Why are British houses so short? Like I can nearly touch the ceiling. Let us know in the comments if you know why they used to make houses so small like this. Well, this looks fairly standard. There's nothing too alarming about this. It's a fairly standard little three kilowatt inverter with an AC and DC isolator. Looks to have been fairly neatly installed. Thankfully, I've got my Unilight head torch. Discount code in the description, by the way. These things are amazing. But it's wired in 2.5 mil twin and earth. Now let me know in the comments if that's acceptable. I've got a feeling it's not. So let me know what you think and why in the comments below. Overall, this part of the install is nowhere near as bad as what's on that roof. I think this is the smallest smoke alarm I've ever seen. Surprisingly, it does work, but it's shockingly small. Now I'm not a heating engineer, but I do know a little bit about pipe lagging. And for us as electricians who are a little bit OCD about all of our cables being super neat and stuff like that, a good heating engineer is the same with their pipes and their lagging. And this looks like it's just been chucked in, to be honest. It looks more like they've tried to wrap a band-aid around some of the pipes than actually properly lagging them. Cable tied this junction box to the side of the pipe. It's not ideal. I mean, look at that. They've just patched that up because they've obviously had to like hack something off the side of that. What that is that I've not seen an old one like that for a while. Isn't that lovely? Look at that. To match with the beautiful 400 year old house, we've got a, a nearly 400 year old consumer unit here. Well, not quite, but it could well be 50 years old. This old Wilex, it's actually Centaur labeled, but same as all the rewirable fuses. And then you've got this old voltage operated RCD. None of this is compliant anymore. So if I was doing the survey on this property, I would have straight away said, you could really do with getting an EICR done, probably getting a consumer unit upgraded. And to be honest with the age of this fuse box, it may well be that even some of the wiring needs to be replaced. But what have they done? They've gone like that, ignored what's here, and they've just stuck an additional consumer unit in so that they don't have to touch the existing wiring and their hands are clean. <sighs> it's not really what I'd call taking a holistic approach to a house like this. Now this heat pump looks to have been installed pretty neatly, but that wasn't always the case. The customer explained to me that the installers put a spirit level on it this way, side to side, but front to back, it wasn't level it was tilted. And so he had to tell them to level it out by putting some washers in under the feet, which they proudly did by just shoving a couple of washers underneath the rubber feet. And then he had to ask them to actually properly install them on the bolts that are above the feet. But this is like fundamental basic heat pump 101 stuff. Like even I know this and I'm just an electrician. You need to have your heat pump level. If it's not level front to back, the bearings will wear out early. And that's just a recipe for disaster. And even the customer knew that. So why didn't the installers? It just drives me nuts. My Apple Watch has just alerted me to the fact that you haven't hit the like button yet. Now this installation is not all negative. As Rob said, the cladding has actually been done really nicely. And it's quite a complex job for a beautiful old property like this but it looks stunning and all the little details that they've put in with the yellow cork around the window sills and changing all the soffits and fascias and everything, it does look really nice. So it just shows that there are some great contractors out there who are doing government funded grant work, but there are also sadly a lot who aren't. I'm sorry, I can't hold back anymore. This cable is triggering me. It's just, can't stand it. Like the facade of this property is so beautifully done and then just lashing a cable across like that, it's just, oh, it makes me sad. <laughs> Moving swiftly on, you were talking to me about where the installers came from. Now we're here in sunny Suffolk, 
So, you know, presumably they came from, you know, within a, an hour or two, right? Well, I, mean, I think the way the, the grant process worked, it's always, I guess, lowest common denominator bid. And actually, the contractors are from County Durham. Mm. And I think this may be carbon zero in a few years, but every trip up and down was 200 quid's worth of diesel for them. Yeah. So they were loath to travel yeah. and they attended as little as they could. Now, let me explain how this whole multiple subcontractor thing works for those of you who maybe aren't in the construction industry. In general, for projects like this, there's a main contractor. The council or government will put out what's called a tender package, which shows what's involved, how many projects, etc., and then the main contractor will bid. And often, not always, but often, it goes to the person with the lowest price. Usually there's a scoring system, but in general, unless you're in the lowest price tier, you're not gonna be selected. And then maybe amongst the lowest price tier, there might be some kind of selection process about quality, but usually it's about price. But the main contractor, they're not gonna actually do all of the work. What they then do is build a team of subcontractors to do the work. So basically the main contractor puts it out to bid to some subcontractors who then often put it out to bid to some other subcontractors. On each level, each person is taking their little chunk of the pie and the slice that's left gets thinner and thinner until it gets to the guys that are at the bottom who are actually doing the installs. So for companies like ours, for example, we never get involved in installations like this because we could not profitably run our business and actually survive as a business if we were working to the prices that these grant installs get offered at. But for some people, they see it as an opportunity to get a load of installs, even if the price is not great. They think, well, high volume, low margin, maybe I can make a quick buck if I get them in quick enough. And that's what they do. They chuck them in in two hours like this. Often we're hearing stories of contractors that are doing four solar installs a day. You said they installed it in like two hours, right? Under two hours in the end. They, they, start, they arrived surprisingly early, just after eight, yeah. and they were gone by about 10. And that, in my opinion, is just impossible at that rate to have any semblance of quality. And that's where everything falls apart. Seeing things like this drives me mildly insane. And the reason is that this isn't just a one-off. I can guarantee that there are hundreds of installs, maybe even thousands like this, happening throughout the country where grant money is involved. And it's so frustrating because in principle, these grant schemes are a great idea. Customers like Rob, who can't afford to fully fund an expensive project like this themselves, are still able to benefit from these kind of technologies. But it's such a wild west out there and it seems like whenever grant money is being splashed around, cowboy contractors see pound signs and jump on the bandwagon to try and make a quick buck. And the result is installations like this. Let's look at this from a sort of an, a helicopter view for a second, right? In theory, this is a great idea, right? Mm. You know, you've got the opportunity to have all of this expensive work funded by a government grant, which, you know, can help you to reduce your energy costs, make your life a little bit more sustainable, but also reduce the CO2 impact mm. of your property. Sounds like a fantastic idea. And this is fully funded, presumably, so you yeah. don't even need to pay like a small amount towards it. No, I mean, at points I've said, oh, could we have a bigger inverter, more panels? Yeah. Can I contribute? contribute. Yeah. And the, the rules of the programme haven't allowed us to contribute. Okay. Do you think that there's some kind of like maybe corruption or something going on behind the scenes where like you get these big contractors, you've got, you know, relationships with the government or whatever, and they win these big contracts and they're the ones who are creaming off most of the money and then it just all kind of falls down from there. Like, What's, why, you know, why does this happen? This is, this is what I want to get to the bottom of. I mean, I think probably the root cause is pretty weak bureaucracy. So I know that our top tier contractor is registered under HIES mm -hmm. and MCS. Yeah. I know that the first subcontractor apparently isn't registered under HIES. Mm -hmm. They're just MCS. Yeah. All this is done under Trustmark. Okay. We've got NAPIT registration, but how does a consumer actually encounter that stuff or have any leverage when the council is the customer? Whether it's corruption or just the mechanics of large corporate businesses with very little motivation, um, it certainly it all lands on the, the consumer. 
Now, it might be a little bit controversial, but the reason I'm making this video is to try and raise awareness, but also to try and team up with you guys to see if there's anything that we can do to solve this problem. Because I feel like the principle of the grant funding is good, but clearly the execution is not happening properly. So what is the solution? Should there be some kind of better quality control behind these systems? Should there be more accountability so that the end user gets a high quality system that's going to last a long time and a smooth installation process without all of the headaches of dealing with cowboy contractors. I'd love to know all of your thoughts so let us know in the comments below. Well thanks Rob for sharing your story it's um, it's awful to hear about situations like this and um, my heart goes out to you that maybe raising awareness like this can help other people to avoid similar issues. Well our customer Rob's going to fight this and see if he can get the job sorted out by the government grant scheme. Let's wait to see what the results are but if you've enjoyed this video you'll love these two that are going to pop up here now because they showcase some really shocking installs too so settle in and watch one of those. <laughs>